This is a video about matte and shiny objects done in cross contour for drawing two. Hi, I'm Rosita Todorova, and um, I will be showing you the second part of this tutorial. On our first part, we're working with a still life with matte and shiny objects. We did a planner analysis drawing using contour line and organizational line, and then we started to add value using uh, cross hatching and cross contour. We started with the darkest object first, and excuse me, the mid tone object first. In our case, that would be the gray beer bottle uh, that we have here. And we established the value of that beer bottle using cross hatching, and then worked uh, on a lighter object uh, after. This was something that was not on the video that has been done in between. Uh, working with a more sparse set of cross hatching to achieve a similar value. Both of these objects um, are matte, and so we don't have to worry as much about high contrast areas, shiny spots. Uh, and um, we also, or I also did a little bit of the box and the little um, cube that the beer bottle is sitting on top of. Uh, I'm starting to work on the black fabric that's behind that beer bottle and sits underneath the urn in the white um, milk container, which we have already added value to the milk container in the beer bottle. And as I um, am working on this cloth, um, it just reminded me that I wanted to say a couple of things about introducing a dark um, value next to another dark value. It's very easy to want to work around the object, uh, leaving it some space. And I want to just remind uh, students that are working that that could give you an effect that leaves a halo right around that object. It's kind of... Uh, becomes strange, the objects start to look like they're glowing when they're not. And so one way to um, get rid of that is to just slightly go over the previous object that you have created. It's not going to interrupt that value that you created. You can just tuck that value right behind the other objects. Working in those small um, hash marks and working with the form of the fabric that you see. As you have a crease or a curve, you want to make the marks follow how you see that crease or curve bulging and forming. If you have something that um, curves up, goes behind, and then curves back out, you really want to again follow that form. And so you might need to tuck a darker value right up against a lighter value or a, di a different directional cross hatching line in order to achieve that feeling that. Um, the cloth itself has a curve and then has drooped down and is coming back up. I hope that makes sense. That was just for a little demo. That's not what I'm seeing in my still life, so I'm going to erase it. All right, I'm going to stop the video for a minute and go uh, add a little bit more contrast onto this cloth and then uh, talk a little bit more about light and uh, making something a little bit more shiny. Um, as we start to see this bottle and we start to build up the value, you can always start to lift up some of that value in order to create a lighter section. And we'll talk more about that in that next video. All right, bye.